Call Don now, 682-1270. News Talk 1270, KIML. News Talk 1270, KIML. Don Carpenter Show. Welcome back to the program. And uh, I'm lucky I, I, I walked out to kind of check on things during the break, and my uh, my guest was out uh, waiting for... Actually, no, you guys came in the back door, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. And uh, so in studio, we have uh, Stacy Eichinger. I got it right. I, got it, <laughs> I was saying it wrong all morning. And... Um, we only have a few minutes, so we'll just kind of just kind of do a little bit of background about about why you're here. You're here. Uh, you're doing the uh, walk for courage for for beads of courage. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, to start, beads of courage is a program that's set up in hospitals throughout the country that help children cope with serious illnesses. Uh, the basic program is for a child going through treatment. There's a specific bead that represents every procedure. So every time they get a shot, uh, chemo, hair loss, blood transfusions, there's a bead for everything that they receive. So they can tell their entire story of what they've gone through through beads. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I I did a little bit of research. Uh, I mean, I couldn't find a – I mean, I found their website, but I didn't get a chance to really really read up on it. But that's kind of a – it's kind of a good way for the the kids that are going through these, uh, you know, through these uh, medical uh, crisis to kind of yeah, yeah tell their story and exactly it's share. tangible evidence of what they've gone through really so right say look at all I've gone through it's it's almost like a medal yes that's exactly what it's and everyone's medal is a hundred percent unique in all theirs. So. yeah that, that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty cool idea yeah. so 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 the walk for. Uh, the walk for courage. You you actually are walking all the way across America. You got it. I started in Ocean Shores, Washington, right on the coast. Touched the water, turned around, started walking. Um, and as of yesterday, I've walked 1,338 miles. Wow! And I'm walking to Savannah, Georgia, via Chicago. Wow! Wow! That is and. Uh, now I, I just gotta know. I mean, are, uh, do you walk right along the highway, or I mean, how how are you doing that? It depends on where I am. Um, in the state of Wyoming, it it is legal to walk on the interstate. Um, so when I have to walk on the interstate, I do, which I typically don't mind because you have such a wide shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Um, today I'll walk though on the old highway down to Moorcroft, uh, just because it'll be a lot quieter. Yeah. So so how many miles a day do you normally do? Uh, between Average 20 to 25, the most I've ever walked was 33.2. Wow. Well, that's yeah. that's a lot of miles. Yeah. That's a lot of, I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even fathom something like that. But I, I, it's for a great cause. And I think it's, it's really, it's really cool that you're doing that. And yeah. so, so uh, you're going to start, actually, uh, you're leaving right from here and you're going to start walking right yep. out of here. Yep. I'm going to go walk and it'll take me, today's about an eight, eight, eight and a half hour day. And you just yeah, and you're gonna stop for the night in Moorcroft then. Yep, I got a family I'm staying with down there. So. Oh, nice, nice. And actually, uh, we're actually up against the top of the hour break. But when we come back, maybe we'll talk about that as well. Sounds good. Uh, maybe the families you're staying with, and uh, you know, I know, uh, I know your Gillette family. Uh, I guess not allowed to talk in the radio, but <laughs> but I, w- I want to thank I want to thank Larry for for giving me your number and kind of leading yeah, me to you. It's absolutely. really cool. So, thank you. <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a short break. We'll come back and we'll uh, talk more with Stacy Eichinger yes. <laughs> from uh, Beads of Courage. News Talk 1270, KIML, Don Carpenter Show. We'll be right back. He likes turtles, too. Don Carpenter on News Talk 1270, KIML. Call Don now, 682-1270. News Talk 1270, KIML. News Talk 1270, KIML, Don Carpenter Show. And welcome back to the program. And if you're just joining us in studio, we have Stacy Eichinger. And uh, we're talking about uh, Walk for Courage. And your your website is walkforcourage.com. And you're doing this for Beads of Courage, which is uh, beadsofcourage.org. Correct. I don't know why I wrote .com. It's .org. <laughs> okay, so, so we kind of got a little bit of an idea of what Beads of Courage is. And... Um, I mean, you're walking across the country. You started right at the ocean in Washington. You're going all the way to Savannah, Georgia. 
uh, via Chicago and Minneapolis and Rochester, Minnesota, and it's uh, kind of a twisty path. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing along the way. Sure. So um, basically, I'm walking to hospitals that Beads of Courage is currently in, um, and what I'm doing is I'm carrying um, little shoe beads. Like I mentioned, Beads of Courage is all about getting specific beads to children for different procedures. There's also beads that represent good things for the kids, too. Um, there's courage beads. There's little heart beads for I love you beads. There's all different kinds of beads. So my bead for Stacy's, for my walk, Walk for Courage, is a little shoe, and people can sponsor those. Um, for $10, it sponsors one of my miles and a shoe. So when I get to the hospitals that Beads of Courage is in, um, we set up a day, and the, the, whoever's at the hospital at the time uh, the kids in the clinic, I can go meet them, share stories with them, and then they, I can pass out my beads, which come with a little card, and I write down how many miles I've walked with the bead and what states I've walked through with the bead. So that's why my route's a little, a little funky, because I'm visiting about, I think it's 22 hospitals that Beads of Courage is currently in. Wow, wow. So, so, so what led you to do this? I mean, how did you, how did you pick this as, as something that you wanted to do? That's a good question. In high school, I read a book called Walk Across America by Peter Jenkins. Um, and that was when I was a junior, so that was, what, 12 years ago? And I just said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that someday. And about three years ago, I realized I, I had the time. I'm not married, don't have kids, don't have any debt. And I said, this is it. This is my time. I'm going to do it. And uh, Beats of Courage is actually founded out of Tucson, Arizona, where I'm from. And um, I had been volunteering for them for about five years. So I approached Gene, who's the founder, and I said, you know, I have this crazy idea. I want to walk across America, and I want to walk for Beats of Courage, and I want to raise money for you, and I want to get the word out there and go meet these kids. So, so what, what do you do in your civilian life? I mean, what's your, uh, what's your line of work? <laughs> Very different. Um, I do not work in the medical field whatsoever. Um, I actually love all, thing pl all things plants, so I work at a garden center, um, and I've been working there for over 10 years, and I've been uh, doing landscaping for about eight or nine years, and um, I'm really fortunate that both my jobs will be waiting for me when I get home, too. See, uh, and I think that's really cool that, that you know, that uh, they're they're holding your job for you. Absolutely. I mean, and it shows that they, they support the uh, the cause. They do. They're, as they should. Yeah, they're very supportive of me, and they're very supportive of Beats of Courage, and I really appreciate that. So. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, I mean, you want to give them a plug? Uh, Savannah Nursery, Tucson, Arizona, the best nursery in town. You can't beat it. Our staff is great, and our plants are wonderful. There, there, I mean, it, it, if you're it, ever in Tucson. Well, hey, you never know. I mean, we have a lot of truckers that go through here, That's so true. and a lot of people traveling, so you never know. There might be somebody listening right now going through on Interstate 90 that might end up in Tucson and need a tree. There you go. You never know. You want to go see some cacti, you can go to Savannah. We'll tell you all about them. There you go. So so what's the walk been like? I mean, what's your average day like as, as, <sighs> as you're walking? Yeah, your mind wanders a lot. Um, a lot of the time it's so quiet and, you know, I hardly talk to anybody, so... Something as simple as getting a rock in your shoe could just drive you crazy, but you're just way too lazy to, to get it out. So I'm like, okay, at the top of this hill, I'm going to get this rock out. And then I get to the top of the hill, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll wait to the next hill. And it's just... Oh, this, rock, <laughs> this rock's not so bad. I kind of like it by now. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing where your mind goes when you're literally walking eight or nine or ten hours a day and, and you have no one to talk to. It's. <laughs> do you even have an iPod? I do. So so you, you listen to a lot of... I listen, but I find myself, I'll listen to the first 30 seconds and then all of a sudden the song's over. I'm like, well, what was I thinking of <laughs> during that three minutes of time? You know, have, have, you, have you thought about books on tape? I have, and I have those too. Oh, so, okay. But I've listened to all the ones I have, so I need to... Um, you download some, some more. Ones. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that that, it, but then again, I guess once you're walking, you probably want to concentrate on that so you don't get hit by a car or something. So. Yeah, that too. I think your subconscious kind of does a really good job of paying attention to that. Because if I might not be exactly paying attention to what's going on, and then all of a sudden I'll snap back into it if I notice a car hasn't hasn't remotely tried to move out of the way at all. I mean, not that they're ever going to hit me, but it's usually really obvious when they notice me because their car shifts a little. Yeah. And if the car doesn't shift, I, I pay attention immediately. 
Um, but I've been really fortunate I haven't had any close calls of, of any kind, actually. Well, that, that's pretty so. cool. I mean, now, I mean, have you had, I, I guess you, you probably studied up on where it's legal to walk on certain highways and that kind yeah. of stuff. You studied up on that beforehand, so. Actually, you know, I did, but I didn't. I, um, I contacted the state and all the state people, I'm trying to think, uh, told me I couldn't. But when I got into, before I got into Idaho, I called the highway patrol and I said, hey, you know, I really need to walk on the interstate. There's some areas that I just can't get through. And they're like, oh, it's legal to walk on the interstate in Idaho. I'm like, really? So then I called Montana and I called Wyoming and I called South Dakota, all the highway patrols, and all of them said, yes, you may walk on the interstate as long as you're walking against traffic. Oh, there you go. So, so, so there you go. I mean, it, it, and uh, I mean, especially when you get in the mountainous areas, it, it really is. Uh, I mean, and, you know, luckily, Wyoming, South Dakota, they have pretty wide pretty wide uh pretty wide shoulders yeah. so you should be all right yeah it's been good so far so uh at the end of the day i mean what do you do at the end of the day then um depends on where i am most of the time i've been really fortunate and i can um, stay with families who take me in um and that's been great i've, I've stayed with wonderful amazing people of from every walk of life uh sometimes i don't have anywhere to stay so I try to avoid staying at hotels if I can because that costs money and I don't have any. And so I might stay at a fire station if I'm in a town. Um, or if I'm not in town, I'll just find a place to hide out on the side of the road and, and camp, set up my camp. I'm completely self-sufficient. So. Oh, so you have a tent and you have all, have, you have all the stuff you need. I do, yeah. yeah. Now, now with the fire stations, I mean, is this something that, that people that hike do? Or is no. this just something, <laughs> it's just something you came up with on your own? Um, I had talked to another cross-country walker, and she said that she loved staying at the fire stations. And so she did that as often as she could. Um, I've just done it at, more out of necessity. Um, but they're usually, or they've always been so friendly and outgoing. And they're like, yeah, let's make you dinner. Let's. Well, <laughs> you know, my, my uh, actually, my ex-wife, her, her whole family was firefighters. And I can tell you, those guys, especially if they're not in an area that doesn't get a lot of action, uh, those guys get desperate for company. They do, so yeah. It, it they're great. probably They probably <laughs> love to see somebody come up and say, hey, and they obviously have the facilities for you to stay at yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been it's been really interesting. Yeah, I can't even I can't even imagine how uh, how uh, interesting that is. Uh, actually, you know what? We're we're actually up against the next our next break. Let's okay. take a short one. We'll come back and we'll kind of wrap things up. Sounds good. We'll let everybody know how they can get a hold of you and and support this. I Absolutely. Mean, it, I uh, highly encourage everybody to check out the website. The website is walkforcourage.com. So we'll be right back. News Talk 1270, KIML, Don Carpenter Show. For the latest on the show, follow Don on Facebook. Just search for Don Carpenter Radio. News Talk 1270, KIML. Call Don right now, 682-1270. News Talk 1270, KIML, Don Carpenter Show. Welcome back to the program. And if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Stacy Eichinger. Uh, she's walking across the country for Beads of Courage. Her website is walk for the number four, courage, all one word, dot com. And beadsofcourage.org is their website. And, and we were talking a little bit uh, in the last break about, you know, your average day. And, and actually, when I was doing the weather, I kind of got a little bit of thought. I mean, you have to walk through everything. Yes. And and you have to carry rain gear, and you probably have to yeah. carry. Uh, I'd imagine by the time you get to uh, by the time you get to Georgia, it's going to be cold, so you'll yeah. have to carry co um, cold weather gear. Yeah, I've actually already had to uh, when I was in the Cascades in Washington. When I got to the top, it was snowing that day. Oh yeah. So yeah, well, I've been I've walked through it all. <laughs> well, well, uh, you started in May, right? I did early May. Okay, yeah, May eighth. Well, I mean, it, I was actually uh, I was actually coming out here, and I actually stopped in Rochester, Minnesota on on May first, and they got a foot of snow. Oh, good cream. <laughs> in in May, and th that's not a high elevation place. I mean that that just uh, well, it doesn't really shock me. It's Minnesota. Yeah. So, but you'll be probably going through there in probably. Uh, uh, September, September, October, yeah. yeah. So, but the nice thing is, um, I mean, I do have rain gear, but I also push a cart. 
Uh, I didn't yesterday through town, but um, I normally have a cart, and my cart has a canopy, bright red canopy. So even when it's, if it's at least lightly raining or... Um, then, you know, that helps keep me pretty dry and it keeps the sun off. And, oh, okay. Yeah, it's great. And you can kind of keep some gear in the cart as well, right? Absolutely. Everything's in that cart. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're not carrying everything no, in your back. No, no. You end up with a, you know, you're all hunched over by no, the end of this. Yeah. No, I love my cart. It's my, it's my house on wheels, really. Yeah. Yeah. So. That, that's, that's pretty cool. So we want to get out the word and tell everybody uh, how they can support you but uh, first how much are you looking to raise for this um, I want to get every mile sponsored so I had mentioned that for ten dollars it sponsors one of my miles and I get to carry another bead shoe bead to give out to the kids that I meet um, so that's the potential to raise thirty eight thousand dollars for beads of courage um, I'm currently at just over nine thousand dollars I believe so I need to catch up well, <laughs> well, we'll we'll do our best. So, uh, so I mean, thirty eight hundred miles, ten dollars a mile. That, I mean, that's that's a lot of miles. It is. It yeah. Is. So, so let everybody know how they can support sure. you. Sure. So, if you go to my website, Walk for Courage. So that's the walk and the number four courage dot com. Um, on my main site, if you scroll down at the bottom, there's a link to my CrowdRise website, which is my fundraising website, and you can actually make a tax deductible donation on that website. Um, and then there's also a PayPal account that goes to me that helps me with any kind of expenses that I might incur. But at the end of my trip, even if I have any cash left over in that account, it, that all of that will go directly to Beats of Courage. And so that that's 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 a pretty good deal. I'm, and I mean, uh, now as far as like your expenses while you're on the road, I mean, you're covering all that yourself or, um, or does, that, does that come out of, I mean, how does that work? It totally depends. Sometimes people, when they hand me cash, they'll say specifically like this is for groceries, this is for, you know, whatever you need. And luckily I actually haven't had to spend a whole lot of money at all. I think out of my pocket, I've pulled out maybe $500 total. Um, and that was almost all in Washington when I had to stay at some hotels because I just hadn't quite gotten down the rhythm of finding host families or good places to camp because there's just too, you know, too populated. So. Oh, yeah. And and I'm sure, you know, maybe we, we the word can get spread out across the country and then more people can kind of sign up to be host families as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess on, on the website, there's a way to get a hold there of is, you. Yeah, there's a contact me um, and you so you can email me off of that. And I try to I try to update that every day or check my messages every day as long as I have cell phone reception. Well, that, that, so. I'd imagine that that cell phone comes in handy uh, when you're out in the middle of nowhere as, as long as you have a signal. Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, I'll warn you, going through South Dakota, there might be a couple spots. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you probably got probably got a couple right before here. There's a couple spots uh, between Sheridan and here that are kind of sketchy, at least with Verizon. I there was, yeah, there was a, a day or two that I... I was just turned my phone off because I didn't. Yeah, yeah, but, but then again, I guess some of us would probably probably pay to get a day away from the cell phone. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, true. with uh, you know, with work calling and you know, getting <laughs> emails and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I mean, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely I guess it gets your mind off of uh, mind off of the real world. You can kind of just focus on walking then. Yeah, it's interesting to think about how when you're driving and you don't have cell phone coverage for five or ten minutes, but for me that could be an entire day. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it it's uh yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I know. Uh, I mean, I I can't even imagine it to be uh, to be honest. I kind of panic <laughs> if I if I'm driving from Sheridan to here, which I do every once in a while. Uh, that that. 20 or 30 minutes, I don't have cell phone coverage. I just panic. <laughs> so is there anybody else you want to uh, want to uh, give a shout out to or give thanks to or anything? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, yeah, the family I've been staying with, uh, Cara and Paul, and thank you, Larry, for driving me everywhere. I really appreciate it. Um, and then if anyone that I stayed with, um, does this go out to Buffalo? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, our, my our, families our, in Buffalo were fantastic. So if they're listening to, I'd really like to thank them. Yeah, yeah. The signal kind of reaches Buffalo, and actually, we have stations in Buffalo, and they use some of our news clips. So this, but hold on, hold on. Uh, well, I was going to tell him to come in and have a seat. That was our sports guy. Hang on a second. We'll just uh, we'll just um, deal with the dead air here for just a second. I got to tell the sports guy to come on in.
as you can see, we don't run a really tight <laughs> ship around here. <laughs> I was going to tell the sports guy to come in because, uh, yeah, I mean, we were just kind of wrapping things up with you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, we might actually be able to get this out on the uh, on the air in, in uh, Buffalo. Great. So, okay, anybody else you want to? No, uh, I think that's, that's probably pretty good. But thank you so much for having me on. I oh, really appreciate it's, it. It's been my pleasure. I mean, I'm glad I can help out. And I think maybe, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll set something up where we can check in with you maybe every, uh, Absolutely. every once in a while, maybe once a month or something like that. You can give us a call. Yeah. Since this is going to be going on until December, right? December, January, possibly even February. Oh, Depends okay. Depends on how how many breaks I take. <laughs> yeah, well, the, it, it, you know, the further down the road you get, especially when it starts getting cold, you might start taking a couple exactly. more breaks. Well, it took me 83 days just to get here, so, and that's only a third of the way. That's that's not that's not that bad, though. No, You're it's making not. a pretty good, pretty good pace. Yeah, so. Okay, well, uh, let's, uh, let's see here. I'm going to change things around here a little bit okay um uh, yeah so once again the uh let everybody know how they can get a hold absolutely. of you absolutely so walk for courage.com scroll down to the bottom and there's my crowd crowd rise website um like i mentioned for every ten dollars i get that sponsors one of my miles and i uh, get to carry another bead to pass out to the kids um and then also if you want to learn more about beads of courage you can visit their website at beads of courage.org and it's a it's a great cause. Make sure you get out and uh, support support beads of courage. I want to thank Stacy Eichinger for coming in, and thanks Larry for setting everything up here. Yep. It was uh, my pleasure having you in, and we'll thank talk you. to you again sometime Absolutely. soon. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yep. News Talk twelve seventy KIML Don Carpenter's show. We'll be right back. From Washington to Cheyenne to right here in Gillette, Don Carpenter on News Talk twelve seventy KIML.